Hello guys and welcome to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about control flow statements. So what are control flow statements and why do we need them? Control flow statements are the ones which can help you control and define the flow of execution in your program. Now why do we need them is because if we want to evaluate some conditions or we want to create some branches of execution saying that if this condition becomes true do this and if this condition becomes false do that. So you can see there are two different branches of execution of a program in this kind of approach and that's where control flow statements can help us. There are a lot of different types of control flow statements like if then else and switch and for and while and do while and we are going to cover all of them in detail in this series. So let's get started with the first one which is the if statement. We covered briefly about this when we talked about operators and I promised you guys that I will be covering this in detail and this is the session where we'll be, we will go deeper into this concept. As we have already understood that if condition is basically used to evaluate a condition if it is true or false. The result of an if statement will always have only two values. It can either have a true value or it can have a false value. There is no other possibility or there is no other value of an if statement or of an if expression. Now like I explained if you want to do a simple uh, programming execution where you say if a particular condition becomes true do this and if this becomes false then do that. It means you need to write this else condition as well that if this doesn't hold true what do I do and how do I write that. So let's understand that with the help of an example. For this particular example I've created a class and there is a public static void main method which is the entry point of this pro program's execution. I have a variable which is called test score. This is an integer variable with the value 76 and I have a char variable which is grade. Basically what I'm doing that based on the test score marks I'm trying to define the grades which a student will get. So for that I have built a condition here so you can see it starts with if which is a keyword then you put these standard braces or brackets and you write your condition inside it. In this case I'm writing the condition saying that if test score is greater than or equal to 90 then the student should get an grade A. So here I've defined this grade variable and here I'm just assigning the value to the grade variable at line 11. If the test score is greater than 90, the grade should be A. But what if the score is not 90? What if this condition becomes false and you want to do something? In that case, you can write this else block here. We call this else block. So you write else as the keyword. You start the curly braces and then you define the grade if the score is not greater than 90, what should be the grade of the student? So in this case, we are saying the grade is F. So if we try to run this example in our, in our mind, we see that the value is of the test score is 76. So 76 is not greater than or equal to 90. So this particular condition will not be true. So line 11 will not be executed, but instead else block will be executed because if the condition goes false, then else block should be executed as per Java. So this block will be executed and grade will get a value of F. And then we are printing this grade value by just writing a system.out.println, a string plus the value. So let's run this particular program and see what happens. We get a grade equal to F here in this sysout or system.out.println because this condition was false. So the control, the flow of the control of the program went to line 12 and then to line 30 because this was the else block. So this is one understanding where we can write an if and else logic. You in some cases you might not need an else block. So else block is not mandatory. It's an optional block. If you want to remove this and if you just want to do a sys out here that is also fine. Sys out means system.out.println for shorthand we sometimes call it as sys out. So you can do something here as well if you don't need the else block. If you need the else block feel free to write it but this is an optional block. But in some cases, your conditions will be more complicated than just a single condition. If you try to understand it from a real world example, in real world, you will not have only two grades as A and F. 
you will have more grades, right? A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. So what are you going to do in that case? For that kind of case, Java provides us with a keyword which is called else if. Else if is just a continuation of if saying that, okay, if this condition doesn't hold true, evaluate the next one with an else if. So I've commented out this code. Let me put this code back into its place and then we will walk through this code to understand it. Okay, so I have put the code back to where it should be and this is how it looks like. So let's just walk through this. The line 10 and 11 doesn't change. It's still the same, but then I have added some additional conditions saying that, okay, if the score is greater than or equal to 90, the grade should be A, but if the score is not greater than 90, but greater than or equal to 80, then the grade should be B. Similarly, if the score is not even greater than 80, but greater than or equal to 70, then the grade should be C. Similarly, if the score is not even greater than or equal to 70, but greater than or equal to 60, which means basically between 60 to 70, then the grade should be D. And if the score is even below 60, then the grade should be F. So you can see I have basically defined the whole logic for defining the grades here. And it always works in a top down approach one by one. The way in the sequence in which you will define the else if block will be the sequence in which they will be executed. So after the condition at line 10, and if this condition fails, line 12 will be naturally executed. If this condition also fails, line 14 will be executed and so on and so forth. It will never be the case that if this condition fails, then suddenly line 16 is executed and then again line 12 is executed. It will always work in a line by line fashion. So make sure whenever you are using the else if statements, write it in a sequence in which you want the natural program to be executed. So this is all we have here. And now let's try to run this example. Let me just bring the system.out.println in a line up, save this file, right click, run as Java application. So we see the value is grade equal to C, which means this particular code block was actually executed. Only this condition held true. Now, let, now let's try to understand how this happened. The value was 76. So 76 greater than 90, no, this condition becomes false. So line 11 is never executed. It naturally goes to line 12 because that's where we have defined the next else if block. Is 76 greater than or equal to 80? No, it's not. So line 12 condition also becomes false. Line 13 never gets executed and the control shifts to line 14. And there we have the condition saying that is 76 greater than or equal to 70. Yes, this condition is true. So the line 15 gets executed. And once this condition gets true, none of the further conditions will be executed because you only need one true statement, one true execution in the whole if else if block. If that one code block gets true, that code block is executed and then the execution jumps out of the if else if blocks and it will directly go to line 22 and it will execute that. Had it been the case that this particular block was also evaluated to false, it would go to line 16. And if this was also false, it would go to the block, which is else block. Let's see that. Let's make this value as 56. So now 56 is not greater than 70. So line 15 will never be executed because this condition will evaluate to false. 56 is greater than 60, no. So this will also be false. And ultimately the grade should fall to else block where we are assigning the grade as F. Let's see. Yes, we get the grade F because ultimately this block was executed because all of the above conditions evaluated to false. So this is all I wanted to cover in this if else if demo. There is another addition of uh, another way of writing if statements, which we call as nested if, where we have an if block inside an if block inside an if block and so on and so forth. How do we write that? And how does the control flows in that kind of an execution? We will cover that in the next session. And that's all for this particular session. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next lecture.